Hey guys, it is Mike with Become the Knight. Welcome to my first patron request video. One of my patrons was awesome enough to pledge $50 a month on my Patreon page. Along with a bunch of other cool perks, he has the ability to pick a type of video he wants me to do, and I'll do it. So this particular patron wanted me to review an entire Muse concert. Let me repeat that. He wanted me to review an entire Muse concert song by song. Now, as I saw from the song suggestion Friday that was a three-parter, you guys really didn't want to stick around that long for the video. So thankfully, this patron was very accommodating to this request, understanding that this is a lot of stuff. So I kind of turned this into its own song suggestion Friday. Today, we are doing a review of Muse, live from Wembley. And I gotta say, this patron is like over the moon about how much he loves Muse. He absolutely adores Muse, which is, you know, it's cool in its own right. So anyway, let's begin. Their opener was Knights of Sidonia. They kind of had this guy who just wore black and kind of faded into the background who was playing auxiliary stuff, like extra keyboards and whatnot. And for this song, he played a live trumpet, and that was so cool. The lead singer and guitar player Matt was playing a Les Paul, it's not exactly a Les Paul, but basically a Les Paul body with a whammy bar. And dude, that was so cool. I've never seen that on a friggin' Les Paul before. I would say the studio version is better. They definitely seem like they had more power in the studio version than they did live. And I think the guitar work was a little bit shortcutted on the live version. Next song up was Hysteria. This to me is one of the best bass lines in rock. I absolutely love the song Hysteria. At the end of the line of the second verse, he stops his last word and then picks up that singing with his guitar and it almost like matches and perfectly blends out to a guitar. It was really freaking cool. I will say again that I like the studio version better than this one only because of the guitar solo. The guitar solo wasn't bad live, it just wasn't quite as precise. That and also he used different effects on his guitar for the live version, which I don't know why he would have done that. And that guitar thing at the end that he did to try to be like Hendrix, just leave leave that out. Third song they did was Super Massive Black Hole. He kind of added some notes to the intro because the original intro in the studio version was more of a bluesy thing and then he added like a minor six to fifth which puts it more in a natural minor which I liked and the bassist is doing a lot of the backing vocals and I'm like 90% sure they have a vocoder on him I'm not sure what what that's all about it sounds cool but not not what I expected he has this weird thing on the guitar and if I recall he actually did it in this song this weird like box that he was like messing around with and it makes all kinds of crazy noise. That thing was super cool. The actual solo itself was a slight letdown though. The ending that they did for Supermassive Black Hole was a lot cooler than what they did in the studio version, so I'll give them props for that. I couldn't give this to studio or live track. This kind of, they edged each other out just enough on their own merits that I would take either. Map of the Problematique. This was actually pretty close to the studio version. Now he kind of cuts off the end of each of the chorus vocals, which is a little bit sad. I know it's really, really tough to sing these, but it, it takes away from the energy for me. The transition between the first chorus and second verse is a lot cooler than the studio album. And then uh, with a lot of these songs, they just like put random riffs at the end that weren't in the studio version. This one had like a super fat riff that was badass. I really dug that. The live version edges out the studio version with that ending. Butterflies and Hurricanes. I'm not as familiar with this song, but I have listened to it before. The orchestra samples were a lot more prevalent in the live version than they were in the studio version, which I liked a lot more. Then partway through, the guitar player just hops on the piano and just plays beautifully. It was gorgeous. The live version was definitely better and more emotional. Next track was Hoodoo. Hoodoo is kind of like their singer-songwriter part of the concert. The bass player takes the guitar and, and plays this beautiful PRS, a gorgeous PRS. Matt, the lead singer, sits down at a piano and plays some stuff, which is pretty cool. I will say, though, this was better live. The studio version always seemed a little spacey to me as far as how they mixed it. And this was a lot more in your face, which brought, which brought the emotion up a lot more. Apocalypse, please. This is a track I'd never heard before. Didn't have a whole lot to say about this, just that it was cool, it was well executed. Uh, didn't quite do it for me, but nothing really stuck out. Of all the tracks in this concert, this would probably be the only one I would give an equal sign. Feeling Good. This one was actually on Song Suggestion Friday before. That e-piano sounded great, and it was a cool mix-up because originally it, it just looks like a big grand piano on the stage, 
and he's playing it and then this this track he actually goes over and makes it an electric piano and you're like holy crap that's not a real grand piano and then there's one part of the song where he actually whips out a megaphone and yells into the microphone to get the effect of talking through a microphone on on the live performance and that was really really cool wow i really need to get a different adjective than cool now the studio version barely edges this one out for me but both versions were fantastic i would definitely recommend going to listen to this one live invincible invincible is one of my favorite tracks on black holes and revelations like when i first heard the intro when I was when I first listened to it, I thought this was gonna be a lame song, and then by the end, you're just like totally with them. Uh, the intro live was also awesome. It was actually I think a little more awesome than the studio version. And the riff after the first chorus was slightly different, both in its rhythm and and the effect that he had on his guitar. But I actually kind of liked it better. And the solo was absolutely better live. I mean, I don't know exactly what he did differently. It's been a minute since I watched it. I'm not fresh from watching this, but I can tell you for sure that it was kick ass. I absolutely love the studio version of this, but somehow the live version was even more passionate. It actually blew me away. That That's freaking impressive, man. That, that's really good. Starlight. This is also one of my favorite Muse tracks. I mean, I kind of just have a special place in my heart for love songs because I'm a cheesy, corny, uh, what's the word? I'm a sentimental at heart. Now the first thing I noticed immediately was it was modulated down. That means that they changed the key and brought it lower live. That does not surprise me because this song is extraordinarily tough to sing. I have attempted several times to do it at karaoke and I need it to be modulated down if I don't want to sound like complete shit. The live version was really good, but the studio version I think was slightly better. The higher key I really prefer it in that higher key, and it just had more emotion to me overall. Time is running out. They had a cool organ effect on the guitar. That's a thing that happened a couple years ago, is they started putting organ effects on guitars. The tom thing that the drummer does at the pre-chorus is awesome and visually exciting. It's just, it's just great watching him play drums. He's totally having fun. And the delay guitar part at the bridge was also a great touch. I don't remember if that was in the studio version or not. Then the last note of the vocals at the very end had this crazy effect. It was, it was off the wall. The studio version is cool, but the live version is way better. It definitely put a lot more life into it live. Newborn. All right, so this track, he goes back to the piano, and I've actually never heard this track before. The beginning is pretty catchy, and the backdrop was super trippy. That was probably my favorite part of the whole track, honestly. The main riff is pretty cool. I was, I was actually really digging it. I feel a little bit of soft rock influence in this one. Again, the guitar solo was badass, and that's the thing, is Matt's not like a shredder shredder. He's not one of those crazy technique guys, but what he does on his guitar solos, he does really well. He, you can definitely tell he draws a lot of influence from uh, Jimi Hendrix. Then the ending of this song definitely shows that he digs Rage Against the Machine and Tom Morello. He definitely has a thing for Tom Morello. Assassin. This was actually not part of the Wembley concert. He kind of added this one at the last minute. I was like, eh, fuck it, throw it in. First things first, I noticed a huge difference in the mix of the drum. The drums sound freaking great at this live performance. The drums were more metal looking, they were like all black, and more metal sounding at this particular concert, which I really liked a lot. Man, the, that kick drum was such a boom, 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 it was so good. And I gotta say, the main riff of Assassin is much heavier live. One thing I also noticed too is in that main riff, uh, if you count a measure one, two, three, four on one, there's a sub hit every time. And I don't think it's a trigger on his kick drum. It's probably a trigger he's hitting with his stick. Maybe he's hitting it with his other foot That's uh, that you would normally use for the hi-hat. Then the ending that they do, apparently they love adding shit to the ends of songs. The ending that they do is a really cool addition. Live was definitely better than the studio version. Better drum mix. And I could hear everything a lot more clearly, which I think helped drive home the heaviness of it. Unintended. We're back at Wembley now, and I have never heard this song before. It's a beautiful intro on the acoustic guitar, and that's about the extent of the song to me. <laughs> really not much to say. It was a super pretty song, super pleasant to listen to as well, well executed. Blackout. 
Uh, they kind of have a ripoff of the Ave Maria as the intro with the strings there. And then there's like weird floating people on balloons doing like acrobatics and shit like out in the crowd. It was it was pretty cool that they were able to do it. But why did you do it? <laughs> I will say it actually matched the mood of the song really well having those weird floaty people out there. This is another one I have not heard before and has a really cool chord progression in it. That's, that's kind of what sold it to me, took it from an equal sign to a plus sign. It's another one of those really super chilled out Muse songs that's like a little spacey and a little out there, kind of like that, kind of like they're drawing from like Lucy in the Sky with diamonds or some shit. It was a cool solo, but he loves his friggin' trem, dude. Oh my goodness. He needs to lay off the trem just a little bit. Plug in baby. There's a cool siren intro on the guitar, which if I remember correctly, it's played on that box thing that's on the body of his guitar. And they had a really cool lick for the intro. If, if I remember correctly, I believe it was a harmonic minor line and like nothing actually repeated itself. He just kind of played some, I think maybe some things repeated themselves, but it wasn't just like a really quick like six note line. It was actually intricate and cool. There was lots of passion in the chorus of this song. You could feel the passion through the whole stadium. This was way better live. Uh, much more energy in the choruses and the ending kicks some serious ass. Stockholm Syndrome. It's another one of those tracks, which is one of my faves. I absolutely love this intro riff. Kind of reminds me of Assassin, but better. This is way, 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 way better than the studio version. It's played just as well, but the production value is actually higher live, which is like really, really tough to accomplish. The energy was higher, the visuals in the crowd were amped up and just elevated the entire experience. This, this is one of those things of like, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And if I thought the ending to Newborn was Rage Against the Machine, Holy cow, this is like a thousand times more rage than that one. Take a bow. They ended the concert with an opening track. <laughs> uh, this is another one of my faves, and I was surprised how close to the studio version they were able to get this. The only thing I would say as a critique is, at the end of some of those melody lines, you could totally tell he was like, barely having the breath to get through them. This is an extremely, extremely tough song to sing. I will absolutely take the live version over the studio version just because I was impressed at how close they got it live. Like, wow. They had all of the samples right in line. The guitar sounded pretty much exactly the same as what was on studio. And the guy sang every freaking note. He barely managed to do it, but he did it. That was awesome. Overall, it was a fantastic performance by Muse. You can tell that they got stronger as the night went on and throughout the sets. And with each song, you could tell they got more and more into their element. I'm not sure what was up with the satellite dishes on stage. I'm still trying to figure that one out, but it was an interesting touch to put on the stage. I would absolutely love to see these guys live, except for the 20 to 30,000 other smelly human beings who would be showing up. The drummer played with transparent drums in the first set, which looked super cool, and I finally got to talk to Ryan about this. He told me that they're actually, I believe, plexiglass or like treated glass or something. They're glass drums, which is badass. I have no idea if it actually does anything for the performance of them or if they just look cool, but I mean, hey, they look cool. And I really want to know what that weird square thing is that's on the body of some of his guitars, and I want one. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on Muse, live from Wembley. Uh, if you guys want to go check it out, I will put a link to the playlist in the description of this video. It definitely kicked ass. If you have a video that you really, really, really want me to do, whether it be a cover song, whether it be a Mike the Music snob, a reaction, anything, you are able to go to Patreon and pledge $50 a month, or you can pledge $100 a month and get more stuff with it. And you can get your own personally dedicated Mike the Music Snob video. And I would also like to give a hell of a lot of thanks to Omi Kuhn for being a patron this long and for the amount that he's already contributed. Like, holy cow, man, you are a main factor of me make, being able to make this my job, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Rock on!